2010, though, May, so it was seven years ago this month, I started my own business, Purple Ink. A um, lot of people ask me where I came up with the name or, or you know, what's my fasc fascination with purple, which is not really, it, really it wasn't anything about the color. I did go to the University of Evansville. Anybody a purple ace? You are too? I didn't know that. Oh my gosh, there's several purple aces here. Well, I was gonna say so I usually I usually tell U of E people that I call the purple ink because I'm a purple ace for life. But that's really not the truth. <laughs> Although I love my my purple aces too. Um but I in in May two thousand ten I was trying to decide what to name the business and remembering that I had worked for 21 years in public accounting, which is kind of like law firms, and it's always somebody's name, right? And I didn't, I don't know why here, like now I had the opportunity to work for my name, but I, I just wanted it to be something different than that. And I wanted it to reflect, the only parameter I had in my head was that I wanted it to reflect some sense of positivity. And that that was just kind of I kept ha using that word positivity or going to the thesaurus online and looking what other words you know have some meaning of positivity. Well, my youngest son at the time was in a big star. You might have heard of him because he was in the fifth grade musical Charlie and the Chocolate Factory at Tom Motto Elementary. And he played Grandpa Joe, and he came home from school and said, here's my favorite line. He said, Grandpa Joe says to Charlie, the Bucket family may be poor and we may be hungry, but we'll always stay positive. Write that in purple ink, Charlie, purple ink. And I said, that's what I'm going to name my business. And I literally sat down, went online to the state Indiana State Department of whatever and filled out my corporate papers like I was just waiting for that moment now some people do think we're a tattoo parlor <laughs> so we do get that occasionally uh, my daughter who she was only I don't know probably 14 or so at the time and said everyone's going to think you're a writer you know with the ink um, but it's been interesting. I have no real marketing skills or background, but uh, it's been an interesting name. It does generate a lot of conversation and uh, people seem to remember it. So I guess it worked. But um, so I, when I started, I, I, I had always thought, even back in college, that maybe I would use that HR accounting skills in in having my own business. But never ever did I imagine that I would start a consulting firm. Um, or that I you know, I thought I would have a retail store or something like that. So I it didn't really surprise me that that's where I ended up. Uh, but I didn't think it would be in consulting. But I had really a lifelong mentor of mine who was my very first HR director back in when I started in 1985 and I'm still friends and still meet with him regularly to go out to lunch. He really encouraged me to think about starting my own business. And although I'd had a great career in public accounting, in 2010, if you remember, was a you know it was the recession, and so many businesses were closing up or letting lots of people go. And so I don't mean to speak that Catsop or Miller was we weren't near as affected as many organizations were. But for the first time, I became a maintainer, and I realized how awful that was for me. <laughs> and I couldn't even really articulate that at the time, but it was all of a sudden we weren't hiring people, we weren't doing much training, we weren't starting new programs, we weren't, nothing was new. 
it was about maintaining what we were doing and I was bored and I was bored really quickly. So when I started thinking, I'm not sure if this is for me anymore, the thought of becoming an HR director at another organization just really had no appeal to me. So I thought, you know, what could I do to to keep my positivity and, and to stay engaged in, in what I was doing? And so where many businesses were closing, my positivity said, oh, it would be a great time to start your own business. <laughs> And I wish I could tell you if you remember, strategic was one of my top five strengths too. I wish I could tell you I was using my strategic and doing it um, by saying that really what ended up happening was a lot of companies were were letting go some of their HR people or downsizing their HR departments. So it actually became a beautiful time for me to start my business then as companies needed help in HR. Um, but that was really just kind of happened. I, I didn't have that strategic thought to think that that's what I thought was going to happen. So I won't take any credit for that, um, for that theory. But at Purple Ink, we do um, all kinds of HR consulting, uh, HR outsourcing, so that might be if a company uh, maybe is in between HR people and we would go in and fill that spot until they got someone hired. It could be someone's on maternity leave and we would go in. We also do recruiting and um, training. I personally now do mostly just training and we have a team of 10 people that um, really do most of the work now and I just come to events like this and talk about my my humble beginnings on Lagodi, right?